Welcome to Selling in the Motor Trade, in association with Automotive Management and Simcoe Training. This is the weekly podcast where we share best practice, tips, and ideas on how to sell more cars, improve your service department, and generally put more profit into your dealership or dealer group. I'm your host, Simon Bokert, or some of you might already know me as Skippy. And firstly, I want to say thank you for taking the time to tune in. Now, going back to that car, pulling it out, nah, I'm not doing any of that. No. You know why? Because I don't have the car. That's the world we live in right now. We don't yeah. have the product. So, so I'm not moment. trying to sell them on a product. You know what I'm trying to do? I'm trying to switch them. Mm. I, I know. I'm in switch car mode in my head. I'm not telling the customer that. But I'm trying to find out what's important to them, the needs assessment, so that I can show the multiple vehicle options so I have a shot at selling them a so, car. So, Jen, are you looking new or used at the moment? Because if used, that inquiry is coming on on one used car, obviously. So you probably if, got that. But new you're talking about now. If you have the car, yep. shoot the video mm -hmm. on the car, if okay. you have it. But the yep. chances are you don't have it. Mm -hmm. So you've got to be prepared for that. So I'm not trying to pull out any car. I, yep. I, I, want, to, I want them to connect with me. So yes, mm -hmm. that's the, my answer. I want them to buy into me. Yeah. The, the likelihood of them changing their minds, we are all addicted to TikTok. And that is a reminder of how we do things, how our brains are wired. We're like ADD on steroids, you know? So so I want to be able, I know that I can switch. I mean, the chances are I'm going to switch them. That's what's happening. You know, they're going to change their mind. And that was pre-COVID. Yeah. Now it's even harder. So I need to connect with this person. They need to see my character. They need to see what type of person I am. They need to buy into me. And so when I say shoot a video, I'm like, hey, maybe Make sure you show them customer service. You know, mm. what does that mean? What are you going to do for me, Simon? In that video, I'm going to save you time, Jen. I'm going to make, I'm going to have everything ready for you ahead of time. If you want to start this online and finish it off in the store, I'm here for you. What's easier for you? Text me. Tell me what, how I can help you today. That's well, what I'm talking about. It's all personalized then, isn't it? It's it just all personalized, 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 personalized. Oh, I, I hate anything that looks like a human robot is dated. It's <laughs> done. It's broke. Can't, can't we all smell that? Uh, that um, pre. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's right. Uh, They're going to sniff it out. Uh, yeah. These people aren't stupid. <laughs> you know, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> and listen, I've got to say for our clients, listen to this. We have see it now there. There is cool drip out there. There's rapid response there. Please mm -hmm. don't just use the templates that these companies have there. Change them, make them sound like you. Um, because everyone uh, we have over here, Jen, um, see it now. Mm -hmm. Great, great company for getting video through to people. Mm -hmm. But it starts off with a similar thing. And I can almost say it verbatim now without reading it. Rather than a few photographs, I prepared a personal video presentation mm -hmm. of it. It's an opportunity to see the car in more detail. But you know what? Everyone sends the same thing. I know. Comes, why are we doing that? It's got to be personalized, <laughs> personalized, personalized. Because why are you getting them to fall in, fall in love with a car that they may not be able to buy? Why are you getting them to yeah. fall in love with a car that's probably going to slip out from under them? Why are you getting them to fall in love with a car that they're probably not going to buy? We, they're going to get to your store and they're going to see the next shiny thing and they're like, oh, what's that? And I'm going to like, you know, you invested an hour into that other car. That's crazy. You wasted cool. your time. Cool. Okay. Hey, listen, talking about cars, getting cars, um, supply of cars in Europe is hard work. Semiconductors, we all know about that. Yes. Now it's wiring looms. Um, uh, over in Europe, um, the, uh, the uh, lithium-ion batteries, a lot of them made in Ukraine. Clearly, yes. we know what's happening there at yes. the moment in the world. So um, there is huge supply issues. It's got to be the same over there, hasn't it? Yes. Yes. What advice do you have for the sales manager? Listen to this, uh, when <laughs> they're struggling to get stock. Okay. That's a big one. It is. Now, you're going to have to modify your sales process. Once again, times have changed. That is a major issue. You're going to have people, and they know, these. everybody knows. People know about the chip shortage. People know about the limited supply. People know about MSRP. Mm -hmm. So they're more inclined now to email and they're, or, or, you know, send in a lead internet lead, whatever, yep. and um, or, or call the store versus just walking in. No so one walks you, in now. Yeah, yeah, it's limited. Yeah. You know, I mean, I mean, I do, I do. There's walk-ins. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, you're sorry. I say that okay. quickly, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, so okay, I need to button up, tighten up those strategies for how you handle your leads and how you handle those sales calls because that's the gold. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the thing the caller's going to call in because they found a vehicle that's on your site. 
Mm -hmm. Right. The thing is, is that here anyway, most of those cars already have deposits. They're still showing on the website, but they're not saying there's a deposit. So they think it's available, but that's fine. You know, that caller is going to call in. They're seeking a vehicle. The chances are they are going to change their mind. They are looking at multiple brands. But Jen, are, does, yes. does trust not go out the window there? When you've got a situation, someone inquires about the car, and sorry, it's got a deposit on it. It's sold. Does that mm -hmm. not go back to what we talked about before, where the customers straight away going, ah, another dealer just telling me they've got something they haven't? Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I'm not going to ever say lie to the customer, mm -hmm. uh, th but I am going to say be strategic about your words. So mm -hmm. I'll give you an example. Caller calls in on a car that you don't have or mm -hmm. it is unavailable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, do you have this vehicle? First of all, I can change that question. I can prevent that question. I can mitigate this problem because you're going to have to tell them you don't have it. Once you tell them you don't have it, they're on to their the hit list. They have a hit yep. list. Yep. You know, you're on the hit, they're on to the next one. You, no one wants to hear no, Simon. And mm -hmm. that's the thing. We keep telling people, no, 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 I don't have it. No, that's going to take three to three to six months to get. You're going to have to wait for that one. No, all right, no, we don't have that one, but we got this one that's like it. Nobody wants to hear that. So you got to be the, you got to find a way to be the yes person. You know, how can we find a way to help this customer? This is in broke mentality mode right here. You know, so when I, the caller calls in, everyone wants to say, how can I help you? I say, that's the first problem. You got to change your process. You already know they're going to ask you about a car that you don't have. Okay. So change the question. You know, thank you for calling dealership name. This is Jen. Who, who am I speaking with? Simon. Hey, nice to meet you, Simon. Have you worked with us before? Find them in the system. Try to connect with them. I'm searching for their phone number so hard in that search bar. I mean, that's my first pro. Nobody ever does this. Mm. I'm, I'm trying to find a connection. Oh, oh ding. There, there's Simon. He's here. He's bought two cars from us. He's, oh, let me just click the one service tab. Boom. I see the last service visit date. It was last month. I'm going to welcome Simon back. Hey, Simon, tell me about your, tell me about your research. What kind of vehicles are you researching? Searching, okay. Love that and phrase. That, right okay. there. Yeah. Yep. Then then they say, I'm looking at a 22, whatever, whatever. I'm gonna say, ah, it's a great choice. Yeah, it's a great choice. What are you comparing it to? Boom. I'm opening the door of opportunity for myself. And then I slide in. Hey, by the way, Simon, I just want to pause for a second and say, welcome back. I know you bought two cars from us. You were a service department last month. I want you to know your preferred client. I'm going to be taking care of you today. I'm going to make sure everything goes nice and smooth for you. Okay, my friend, I'm going to show you everything you can take home today. I'm going to show you everything that's coming in. I'm going to make sure you know all your buying options today. All right. Yeah. See, Come on. You, Hustle you, mode. Yeah. <laughs> Dead right. You're back to that high class hotel that knows you come back again and they're That's looking right. after you. Uh, come on. It's experience. Yeah. Love it. Absolutely love it. Mm -hmm. Hey, listen, now I want to open up uh, your views on EVs. Okay. Mm -hmm. Electric vehicles uh, coming. Um, I'm speaking to someone who comes from the world of Tesla and mm -hmm. what's actually happening there. And um, mm -hmm. I just want to say, how are the dealers going to have to adapt to the changes faced? We we already touched on this from people who used to buying Tesla, just click, click, click. That's going to happen with EVs over here. Mm -hmm. um, but with regards to the service department, now we call it after sales over here mm -hmm. in Europe, but okay. the service department, um, clearly these cars are going to have less servicing requirements. I'm not sure if that's right. Some people say yes. Some that's people right. say no. Okay. That's right. Mm -hmm. What impacts is it going to have on the dealers? There's obvious impacts. And what does a dealer have to do to start preparing their service departments for it? Well, it's service and sales. You know, mm. first there's the, there's the, you know, the, the modification of the property. So they got to, you know, be able to install all of these chargers. They've got to install the technology to help service these vehicles. But I think if you're, if you haven't already started working on it, you're behind the eight ball and it's, it's not just service, it's sales too, because customers are calling in and they want an EV. The, the media is, you know, put a huge emphasis on, on uh, EVs and people are interested. They want to know more. So you might not know. Our yeah. government has as well. 2030, we have to go this way. So it's uh, our government's definitely pushing this. Now, that will okay. keep going out, we think. But yeah, it's... It well, is. it's causing a lot of interest. So we need to yeah. be able to handle that. In the service department, mm. you know, I think... Um, we have to change facilities. That's what the dealer is going to be prepping for. They're going to have to school these technicians. They're going to have to have a program in place for technicians to learn this technology. You know, they're going to have to get the certification and you got to be on this stuff now. So for example, some, some of them will say, well, we don't have any, I mean, we have one electric car in our lineup. I say, well, that, that just is a reminder it's happening. So, so you, you got to get ahead of this because the more you know about these cars and how they work and you're 
dialed in. You want to be the one guy on your team that knows everything about everything, whether you're a technician or you're a salesperson. So now that because because you start to, it's like AI. You start learning more. You start to know more. You can make better decisions down the road because you know the history. You see the evolution. You're going to connect with people based on your knowledge and your and your know with all. And and that's I think the critical piece here is to know that even though you might not have a lot of these vehicles coming through your shop, you need to be an expert at how these things are are what's under the hood how it's working you know what the um uh what, what the liabilities are and um and be able to talk be able to talk edu from an, a knowledge perspective and, and at the same time and i think it's even more so for salespeople because they're getting hit with the and they they get so frustrated like, oh this guy's looking for an ev we don't have yeah. any you know and i'm like that's an opportunity because how do you what do you like you, you're getting sold the customer's selling you now because I, if i didn't ask enough questions then i don't really know if ev is actually the only choice I need to be ready to serve mm. up options. Yeah. Yeah. So many people are looking at EV, but they've realized it's not the right choice yet because of infrastructure, blah, blah, blah. Um, right. the, the other thing they have to get their head around, not just the car, it's actually tariffs and charging and where do I charge it? That's what that that's customer right. wants. Uh, that's some, what that customer yes, what's needs. What's the range look like? I mean, this changes all of our our questions to customers and flipping over to the um, to the sales side of it. You know, you need to ask these questions to people. How, how much are you driving every day? What's your month look like? Are you working from home? Do you go mm. on a lot of family trips? How you know? Do you know where your charging stations are? Well, how's your garage equipped? You know, because yeah. the garage could be an issue for this customer based on if they have a you know, a level one outlet. I mean, you're going to get four miles to the hour. That's the, I mean, if you only drive 12 miles a day, okay, that's going to work for you. If you don't have the proper structure in your garage to, to, to uh, rewire, this could be a fortune yeah. to try and get a level two in here. Yeah. So true. Yeah. Hey, listen, I'd like to turn it into um, a training now and get your views on um, high staff turnover. I, I don't know what it's like in the U S but okay. um, car salespeople, we've, we've got that high turnover. I mean, turnover, it's a real issue in Europe. I know we have a lot of people listen to this in Australia as well. Okay. And it's exactly the same thing there. I want to get your views on how do we stop <laughs> this? We train people one month, they forget it the next and we end up sacking them the third or they just go off and do something else. What's your views on trying to slow down that staff turnover? This is a leadership issue. Mm -hmm. This isn't a salesperson's issue. This is a leadership issue. And I think we have to do a better job in the industry of putting more emphasis on internal education. And, you know, that's whether they're calling someone like you or me to come in and help them. You and me aren't going to be enough. You know, this has to be a culture that yeah. you that you nurture and that you you get a grip on because you owe it to people to to know how to do their jobs from day one, even maybe before day one. So leadership has to recognize we need a program in place. Let me tell you, the majority of stores I go into, they don't have a training process in place and, and then they're not consistent about it. And more, more importantly, you know, you've got to identify who's going to be doing this because if you, and we've been tasking the sales managers at this for years and I was too. I mean, the truth is, that is not their skill set. Okay. Mm. That was never their skill set. We're trying to ask them to do things they're not yep. skilled at. And so you've got to go out there and find people like you, Simon, you know, to come into the store and to help them create a program and to help train their, their, the, the, a person, a, a, you know, this is a role in the store. How, if you want to turn, if you want to prevent turnover, you've got to have a coach. Yeah. Yeah. You can't just put the players out there and be like, all right, go get them. Nobody's running the plays. Who's running the plays? Yeah. I, I think it was Zig Ziglar said years ago, the great, great uh, sales trainer. Uh, you know what? You can't just train people and think it's done. It's like it's, it's having a bath. It is. Um, <laughs> I, was it, I think it was him who said training is not something that you've done. Or, okay, it's training is something <laughs> that you do. You're doing. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. so, so true. So it just doesn't happen. And of course, it's the YouTube generation we're training nowadays. Uh, and that's where, uh, I, I don't know about you, but I started watching videotapes, which were uh, videotapes. Um, I sat in a room for a day um, watching videotapes that was so boring, went on and on. And I keep on screaming, no, this is the YouTube generation <laughs> we're speaking to here, okay? People want to know stuff now, yeah. okay? And this long training is not what happens. Um, ah, that's so old school. Uh, some of the, our close clients would know that um, 
uh, in our family, my wife, uh, we had some tough times. She was diagnosed uh-huh. with cancer. Things are really, really good at the moment. Okay. But okay. we're coming through it. But it was okay. Christmas time. I had mm-hmm. to go and do some of the cooking. Now, I'm not a cook, Jen. So I went straight <laughs> to YouTube to work out how to do the <laughs> roast vegetables. And you think about what video did I yes. go and have a look at? The video that was going to be 48 minutes. No, you had to do it. you're looking for the two minute video. The video that was 30 <laughs> seconds or it was a three minute video. Now, I gotta right. tell you, I'm a man. I went to Great the 30, example. 30 second video to start with. And right. they were just trying to sell a cookbook. Okay. And so <laughs> right. Give me what I want as yes. quick as I can. And I, know. I think our salespeople are the same thing. They want to know how to overcome the objection on gap insurance now. They want to know how to deal with the objection. I haven't got that car in stock now. That's Instead right. Sitting there on that eight hour uh, process. So Okay. Okay. So let's take that. Yeah. And that's, this, this makes it a lot more easier for leadership in the stores to actually bite this off. You know what I mean? Like you, training for me is discussion. If I was to even lean in on something that we found on YouTube, you know, it doesn't have to be your content. It's somebody's content, it's, it's, but it makes the same point as you just gave us the example, you know, and it allows me to ignite the conversation and then it gets the team talking. And then, you know, I, I like to put things on flip chart papers. That way it resonates more. But imagine a, you just take just an objection. Do you have this vehicle and you don't and it's not coming in? What's your response? And have everybody go around and tell their response and then just give them a couple ways like I gave you on the call you know and just yeah. it's a new technique you know and and maybe it was the video that got you there and it got us into a short discussion but I always say to management you know put, ha, just have the talk just keep talking about this stuff it doesn't need to be formal nobody likes formal yeah. nobody likes any of that they want to have they, they want to learn something and they want to get on with it yeah and they want to learn in like bite sizes so it's just a get, it, getting them to talk. You know, here, they, they start their day off with a save a deal. And that's basically like yesterday showroom traffic on Sorry, not, I've not heard that. So save a deal. That's like your morning sales meeting. Is that it's right? Like me- yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And they're going through yesterday's showroom traffic and what was unsold. They're trying to save a deal. Okay. okay. Right. So, the, but you know, I think this is the moment where you can get everybody together and you can just have a quick, you set on your phone, you set 10 minutes on your phone. That's it. That's all you're tapped out 10 minutes. You're over. It's oh, over. Please not you know? that hour and a half sales. Oh, in the nobody morning. wants to, that's, that's dated. No one yep. likes that. Yep. No, you're going to, that's how you're going to get turnover. Yes. <laughs> Stop doing that. <laughs> uh, I, 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 listen, yeah. I was working with a dealer group uh, just today. Okay. And they're talking about, hold, I talk about a checkout meeting before people mm-hmm. go home, check out. And that's where we look at, see if we can rectify a deal before they go home. And he mm-hmm. said, what, another meeting? And it's like, no, when you <laughs> dig know. into it, that's the because they are doing an hour meeting in the morning. And that's salespeople crazy. are losing the will to live. No one yeah. can sit there for an hour. No one. Yeah. I mean, you're going to have to be high energy like Simon or Jennifer in order to pull this off. And who is who 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 does that? <laughs> you know, caffeine, <laughs> caffeine. That's what we have. Okay. Right. <laughs> Actually, I drink too much. Hey, listen, this one here, this um, <laughs> this question is really to get my head around what you would do and what you okay. would explain for someone listening to this who's we have lots of people who are investors they own the dealership the dealer group there so jen if you owned your own dealership or dealer group tomorrow so you've just bought into it okay in the first 90 days mm-hmm. what would you focus on I, I think i would focus on salaries the commission thing wow. for me i didn't expect I that didn't expect yeah. that okay we are all motivated by money. You know, your pay plan, if you want anybody to do anything, it comes back to the pay plan. That's the truth. So I, I would look at the pay plans and I would do something very different than what we've been doing in the past, because I think the things that we've been doing in the past is what's preventing our future and it's recessing our growth. So I, I'll put this into perspective. We're paying huge commissions, you know, that's three mm-hmm. X. Mm-hmm. Um, I like MSRP. I don't want that to ever go away. Mm-hmm. But they're they're not having to work for it, you know, mm-hmm. so it's easier to put the deal together because it's basically I'm taking an order. You have mm-hmm. it in silver. Oh, that's what I want. Great. Write it up. I'm like, that's not the sales process, no. you know, so now we're going to pay three X on that. 
and uh, and then they're gonna they're gonna come into work 20 minutes late and they're gonna be like and if you say something to them and you're on edge because you can't find people to replace them so you're like you, you know you start band-aiding expectations i want to raise the bar not lower the bar and mm. we've started to lower the bar because we fell hostage with the people that we do have and now uh sometimes uh, well, to going back to what I was going to say is I would change the pay plans and I would look for a higher salary because I want a higher qualified person to be representing my company. I want professionals. I want people buttoned up and willing to work and know the expectations are going to follow the rules. Mm -hmm. I will pay them more. I will incentivize them based on what I'm looking for. As mentioned, you know, I'm going to interview people based on their social media presence, what they're willing to do on social media, because I need them to bring in business. I need them to bring in their own business. So I'm going to, that's part of the pay plan. You're going to have to bring in your own business here. I'm going to help you with some of the leads, but um, we expect you, you know, to build relationships with people. To build contact your own people. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh-huh. And um, I'm going to invest in people. I'm going to invest in people hard because they're the front line. They're the brand. You know, they're the ones that are representing, you know, this establishment. And, um, and I want people to show up on time and I want them to follow the rules. I want them to do the work that's expected, not sitting around waiting for an up. That's, that's, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think that that's productive for mm. a business. Mm. Well, it's not the answer I was expecting, but actually it makes all the sense in the world there. It really does. I'm getting that right. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and listen, um, wrapping this up then, is there any tip or idea? If there's one tip or idea you could give uh, a salesperson now, because we've given some ideas to investors, to a salesperson, listen to this, that's going to, on the way to work, listen to the podcast and think, right, what can I put in today, immediately, now, that's going to help me earn some money and sell a car? I'm going to focus on retention. This is going to be the future. This is this is the now. Mm -hmm. It's um, here we've had limited production. And so we get a lot of business outside of that dealer's market. Long-term, this is gonna be a problem because that customer is never coming back to buy a car from you, let alone service their vehicle in your service department. Now, this is a cloud here, a cloud because the service department's never been busier, but we're buying more used cars to supplement the new, the, 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 the lack of new car inventory. Mm -hmm. So that means I'm buying more used cars. So I'm putting them through the shop. The internal work has gone through the roof and we're busier than ever. Customers are hanging on to their cars longer. They're buying out their leases, you know, so that's fueling more work in the service department department. So it looks like, oh my gosh, we're killing the game over here. But in time, as, the, as we all know, things evolve and change. And if I'm selling cars to all customers outside my market, they're not coming back to me. So in, to answer your question, I'm going to focus on retention. So mm -hmm. what can I do to ensure that customers continue to come back to me, that they have a great experience. And that's from the, the, the it's one client and you've got a sales a sales uh, touch points and you got service department touch points and they got to talk to each other. They got to be consistent about this process. Um, I'm going to focus on how can I, how can I prospect out of my database? Okay, this is, this is the real answer here. I'm going to go after my own client base and I'm going to see that they're coming in for service for, I'm going to just give you a small example mm -hmm. here. You can hit this from multiple aspects. Okay. I see they're coming in for service. I have a process now to call that customer and introduce myself. Hey, Simon, this is Jen. I'm a guest experience team here, ABC Motors. I saw you were coming in for an oil change in three days. And yes. Okay, great. It's at 315 confirmed. And do you need anything else? And by the way, when you're here, I want to get you a complimentary market assessment on your vehicle. That way, you know the value of your vehicle. You always know where, where, you're, where you stand in the marketplace. Things happen to people, and sometimes they need the extra cash, and they just maybe want to even trade in their vehicles. So I'm going to make sure you, you I get that handled for you. And if that's okay, I'll uh, show you the results. And I, what am I doing? I'm going to poke around. First, I'm going to get a trade appraisal on every service appointment that comes in. Then mm. I'm going to poke around. They're like, oh, yeah, that sounds great. Are you enjoying your your car Simon is it, is it is it meeting your expectations uh mm -hmm. poke around hunter yeah. where are you a broke mode <laughs> broke mentality. you know what I mean like is there yeah. a deal here is there a possibility yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay you're coming in I got I got an appointment already they're coming in boom okay this is the low-hanging fruit yeah. and um 
And now I'm, I'm going to ask them some more questions. If they let me, if not, boom, I got my trade appraisal. Good. I'll, I'll do the appraisal. I'll meet them when they come in. And um, and this is why we have to start to get the sales and service teams talking because the service providers don't give a crap about you nope. and your nope. appointment to give a, you know, and, and I'm going to close that ticket out. I'm never going to threaten the service department. I'm going to, we're closing that ticket every single time. I even apply it to the new car purchase, yep. but um. I want that customer to, uh, I, I'm going to be, I'm going to text that customer. Hey, text me when you arrive, you know, let me meet you before you got to go. If you, if you're some wait time, I'm going to meet you. I'm going to go over this. That way you get that appraisal. You, they want to know what their car is worth. They've heard the news. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm doing you a solid and a favor because I, we appreciate you by giving you something unexpected. Yeah. And, and you That's know what, this value. There's so many salespeople at the moment that haven't had to do that over the last two years. I mean, never. it's- They it's never had a prospect. It's low hanging fruit um, and they just didn't have to. But I tell you what, what's happening is we need to start getting that right now. We need to get That's better. Right. We need to get back to the basics. I, I, I just back love to that. The basics. And, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Back to the basics. So you got to go after your database. The, mm. the, these are your best customers and yeah. they're coming into your department and we got to buy those cars from them. And that there's no better car than that car right there. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to buy that car. I'm going to buy a good car, a car mm. that we've got service records on. I'm mm. going to keep a customer. I'm going to show them how I can get them into their next vehicle. You know, I'm going to sell them a car and I'm going to get internal work for this. I mean, this is a win. This is how mm. we sell cars. Love it. Love it. We're definitely on the same page. Jen, I've really enjoyed this. <laughs> hey, listen, how do people get hold of you? So E and uh, Dealer Solutions is your company that's, there. That's right. Um, so how do people get hold of you? What's the easiest way? Mm -hmm. Okay. I got a couple of things for you. Um, so I have a podcast and I started it about uh, just under two years ago. Hey, Dealer and Talk with Jen. Everyone needs to go and listen to that one. It's a brilliant <laughs> podcast out there. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. It's called Dealer Talk with Jen Suzuki. It's on every major podcast outlet. Um, that is one way, you know, mm -hmm. to stay connected to the content. If you like my approach today, I do 10 minute free classes for service and sales teams. I bring on guest speakers. My mission is always the same to bring you something that will elevate your business, elevate your career path, no matter who you are, executive, general manager, <laughs> dealer, principal, yeah. Service advisor is something for you on here. Um, my website is edealersolutions.com. You can reach me there. You can send me a text directly from the, the homepage. I will respond to you. Um, <laughs> you can um, you can email me, jennifer at edealersolution.com. I'll give you all my contacts so you can put it in the show notes. But, um, you know, we do a lot of different programs. I know you guys are, you know, over the pond. Yeah. But um, I would, I'm happy to help anybody. You know, yeah. really, I, 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 this is, this fuels my fire when people reach out to me and they have questions as you did, Simon. And, um, and we have, you know, remote programs too, like our level up now. And I teach live classes, um, on zoom once a week it's recorded. So, you know, people can still pick up the recording. I send out Friday tips via text <laughs> and, um, I offer a lot of free content in our customers' logins that they get with that program as well. So anyway, I've, that's a lot of stuff right there. That's a lot of stuff. <laughs> uh, listen, up. Uh, listen, all our clients as well, uh, a lot of people with the AADA uh, study tour. I know when Jen is out there speaking at the NADA conference, uh, at the end of it, go and say hello. And uh, yes. say hi. She's always so welcoming and gives lots of advice. So Jen, thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate it. Yes, of course. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much for inviting me. That just leaves me to say that all details of this episode and other episodes on the selling in the motor trade can be found on our website, simcotraining.co.uk. Go there to get a copy of our book, Words That Sell Cars. Go there to sign up to a free trial of our sales fitness online sales training program. Easiest way to get hold of me is Simon Bokert through LinkedIn. Thank you.